I have a lot of uh, sayings all over the wall in my office. And, uh, but there's one that I almost forgot was there. I mean, the one I use all the time is that one where it says it'll never be the same, but it will be okay. It's maybe when you lose somebody you love or something happens in your life that changes everything and you know it's not going to be the same anymore, but somehow, some way, it's going to be okay. And the other one is about courage, where it says courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes courage is just that voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. And boy, I need to hear that. You know, I don't care how old or young we are, or how successful or unsuccessful you may think you are, but many of us, our lives are almost defined by unfinished business. You know, you cash it in at the end of the day, and instead of being thankful for what you have gotten done, all you think about is the stuff that you haven't got done and that you got to do tomorrow. And maybe the hardest thing is, whether somebody you love dies at the age of 31 or 91, you think to yourself, <clears throat> why didn't I make that phone call before he died? Why didn't I go visit? Why didn't I ever tell her that I loved her? Why didn't I say thank you more? And you know, we can't do it all. And probably at Christmas, those feelings become a little more real and a little more intense. Because we become so busy and crazy this time of the year that we forget that Christmas is really a message. It's a spirit. It's a way of living. And it's easy this time of the year to feel like you don't have enough that you don't have enough time. And many of you may not have enough money to give the stuff that you want to those you love. And maybe you don't have the health or the energy to do what you want to do to those you care about. And so as I'm thinking about these things and those two signs, I turn around and I see a sign on my back wall that I hardly, hardly ever look at. And it says this. It says, Jesus of Nazareth requests the honor of your presence at a dinner to be given in his honor. And so I'm thinking about that, and I come into the sanctuary. You know, if you ever get a little bit burdened, come by the church when nobody else is here. And just plop yourself down in the middle of the sanctuary with no lights on, just a little bit of light coming through the skylight. And just sit here by yourself and look at the altar and look at the cross and think about what religion and Jesus and God are all about. And so I look at the altar and I see the cup and I see the plate with the loaf of wine bread that we're going to share in a few minutes. And I realize why it is that I love communion so much. Because when you come up here to the altar and you stand or you kneel, all you are is yourself. For just a moment, all your unfinished business doesn't matter. For just a moment, you don't have to try to do it all for everybody else. All those inadequacies and second-guessing yourself, for a moment, that stuff doesn't get in the way because here, it's just you and the spirit, a room that you enjoy, and a God who loves you. It's like Jesus says, come up here. This is my dinner. And just be yourself. One of the hardest things is on Thanksgiving, a family came that hasn't been here for a long time. They have three kids. And they kneel at the altar, and two of the kids can take communion. And I get to the third kid, this cute little kid, and she holds out her hand. Now, what are you supposed to do? And the mother kind of goes, tch, 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 tch. and I just felt so bad because I really believe if Jesus was up here giving communion, he would have put a hunk of bread in that little girl's hand. He said, what is this about first communion classes and who can and can't take communion? The girl wants to be reminded that God loves her. Don't slap her hand and put it away. And I thought, that really stinks. But you see, that's the message. It's just holding out your hand and accepting what's been given. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to necessarily talk about it. All you want to do is receive the gift of somehow 
that God loves you and cares about you. My gosh, she just heard a kid's sermon about loving everybody, and the pastor won't give her a hunk of bread when it comes time for communion. You see, the Jesus of Nazareth requests the honor of your presence at a dinner in his honor. And you don't have to understand it. And you don't have to earn it. Just come. Because that's why Jesus was born. Oh, by the way, the gospel lesson, it's about judgment day. And at judgment day, there's the sheep and the goats. There's kind of the saved and the unsaved. And the saved are pumped because this is their day to get into the kingdom. And Jesus comes up to them, and they say, we can't wait to get in. And Jesus says, well, I'm not going to let you in. And they go, why not? I mean, we've done all the right things. And Jesus says, well, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was lonely, you didn't visit. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. And they say, we never even saw you, Jesus. And Jesus says, you know, whenever you didn't clothe somebody in need, whenever you didn't feed somebody who was hunger, whenever you didn't visit somebody who was lonely, that means you didn't visit me. So you guys have some work to do. Then he goes up to the unchurched. Maybe the people whose past is a little checkered. The ones who didn't go to the temple as often as they should. And they're ready for going downstairs. <clears throat> and Jesus says, I'd like to welcome you into my kingdom. And they go, wait a minute, we're not worthy. And he says, wait a second. When I was hungry, you did feed me. When I was lonely, you did visit me. When I was naked and cold, you gave me something to wear. And they said, we never saw you. And he said, whenever you did this, Whenever you went to visit the lonely or clothe the naked or feed the hungry, you actually did it to me. You see, this is why all those names are on the table. This is why the love bucket is never empty. This is why somebody can call the church at the last minute and say, can we help my neighbor down the road whose house just burnt down? And the next time you feel just a little bit overwhelmed this Christmas season, when you feel like that true spirit has kind of escaped you, when you feel like unfinished business is the only business you have, remember, there's a reason why Jesus was born in the barn. There's a reason why he walked among those who needed a second chance. And there's a reason why he died on a cross between two thieves. Because he wants us to know that the most important thing about religion is not getting into heaven. It's about bringing a little bit of heaven into the lives of somebody else. And Jesus says to us, that's precisely where I live every single day. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed. It's on page 105.